Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and another set of notes for AP Psychology in our unit on Abnormal Psychology and Treatment. In this set of notes, we're going to be focusing on schizophrenia. So go ahead and make sure you have your notes and let's get started. So with schizophrenia, it's really important to note what psychosis is. And you want to make sure that you have the notes um, if you're one of my students. Um, but if not, in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, which you can find linked below, um, in that set of notes that I've created for you that is a guide that goes along with this video up at the top in a big, huge cloud is psychosis because it's really important for you to know that, really to understand schizophrenia. So psychosis is a symptom, not an illness itself. It's part of the illness in which thought and emotions are so impaired that contact is lost with external reality. So if dissociation is a break in personality, you want to make a note of this, then psychosis is a break in reality in that a person who's suffering from psychosis has a very different reality than someone who is not. Schizophrenia is now on a spectrum, and that encompasses the many and varying degrees of symptoms a person can have and still be identified as schizophrenic. And that is an update with the DSM-5, and so it is called the Schizophrenia Spectrum Disorder. It's important for you to have this kind of correlation or understanding that if depression, which we talked about back in our depressive um, disorders notes, if depression is the common cold of psychological disorders, then schizophrenia is the cancer. And that is not quite as common as the common cold, but it is much more intense, much more severe. Nearly 1 in 100 people suffer from schizophrenia, and throughout the world, 24 million people suffer from the disease. It strikes young people as they mature into adults, and symptoms usually begin to appear around the age of 18 to 20, and it does actually affect men and women equally, but men tend to suffer from it more severely than women, and we'll talk about, with, we'll talk about that with the types of kinds, the, the kinds of schizophrenia. So this map kind of shows you the prevalence and the rates of schizophrenia by country per 100,000 inhabitants um, and that it really is a global, a global issue. So the literal translation of schizophrenia is split mind. So again, dissociative identity or dissociation disorders is split personality, um, where this one is split mind. It's a split from reality that shows itself in the following ways. And we're going to go through each one of these um, in the sets of notes um, and uh, in the slides in the future here. But it's important for you to know what delusions and hallucinations are. So first, we're going to look at that disorganized thinking. And here's a quote. This morning when I was at Hillside Hospital, I was making a movie. I was surrounded by movie stars. I'm Mary Poppins. Is this room painted blue to get me upset? My grandmother died four weeks after my 18th birthday. This monologue of someone suffering from schizophrenia illustrates that fragmented and bizarre thinking with distorted false beliefs called delusions. Okay, so it's important for you to note what delusions are and that I'm Mary Poppins is an example of that. Many psychologists believe that this disorganized um, thinking occurs because of selective attention failure, and that results in fragmented, bizarre thoughts that split out in really, or I'm sorry, that spill out in no particular order. So disorganized perception is the next one, where a schizophrenic person may perceive things that are not there. This is hallucinations, and again, we're going to define that more clearly in a bit. Inappropriate emotions and actions is that last of the three, where emotions and actions are inappropriate to the situation. So a schizophrenic person may laugh at the news of someone dying or show no emotion at all. That's called flat affect, often referred to, like I said, the flat effect um, or apathy and affect being emotion, right? And if it's really flat, there's really no no emotion there. And that's exactly what the symptom is. So there's then two types of symptoms, right? There's positive and there are negative. It's important for you to note that in psychology, positive does not mean good. Negative does not mean bad. 
it can, but it normally means the adding of a stimulus or the removal of a stimulus, like in learning and conditioning. Well, in this case, it means the adding of a behavior. So positive symptoms are distortion or excess of normal functions and tend to be most frequent in the first stages or early episodes of schizophrenia. And you want to note it's adding to normal functions, so it is the presence of inappropriate behavior, right? It's adding to the normal functioning of of someone, and that is the inappropriate behavior that's being added. Again, that's the positive aspect. This includes delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, often resulting in a word salad, and disorganized behavior. Um, Delusions. So let's really get this out there and really define it. These are most simply false beliefs. They're distorted and incredibly false, like the Mary Poppins one, right? Like here's another one. Delusions are usually of persecution, meaning someone is out to get me in that paranoia there, and then of grandeur, meaning I'm Superman or I'm the greatest golfer of all time, something like that. Another um, positive symptom, let's go ahead and get this explicitly defined, is hallucinations. This is perception without sensation. Your eyeballs, your ears, your sensory organs, right, are not picking up any stimulation and yet your brain is perceiving it. That's a hallucination. It's not there in reality, but it's there in your brain whether it's sight, sound, touch, taste, any of it. Frequently, such hallucinations are auditory. Those are more common and less often visual, olfactory, or gustatory. So it's more common for auditory. And then we have disorganized speech, um, which is that word salad, disordered thoughts, um, lead to jumbled words that seem to make no sense to the listener. And that you really, you just take a paragraph and jumble it all up. Um, and that's what it sounds like. Disorganized behavior. So patients with schizophrenia often have motor behaviors that are inappropriate. Um, The individual may perform senseless compulsive acts like continually rubbing an arm or rocking in a chair. And it's that repetition. um, And it does oftentimes get more um, inappropriate um, in these cases. So what are negative symptoms? Again, it's the removal of, right? So behavioral deficits or the loss or decrease of normal functioning in that there's something missing. It's the subtracting from normal functions. So it is the absence of appropriate behavior. And this includes that flat affect and that they're avoiding eye contact, they have an expressionless face, um, and they have apathy, non-interest, monotone voice. There's also poverty of speech, meaning long lapses or slowed speech, and a lack of directedness and that there's slowed movements, little interest in social participation. Chronic and acute schizophrenia is important for you to note. Um, when schizophrenia is slow to develop, it's called chronic process, and recovery is actually doubtful here. Sk- such uh, schizophrenics usually display negative symptoms, and so that's kind of how you know that it's slow to develop and more negative symptoms is the chronic process. Whereas acute reactive, it rapidly develops and recovery is actually better. Such sch- uh, schizophrenics usually show positive symptoms. So in addition to the common positive negative symptoms we described, there's um, two that you want to make note of. There's paranoia and there's catatonic. Paranoia is common in schizophrenics where they have this preoccupation with delusions and hallucinations, often with themes of persecution and grandeur, right? Like being super grand and greater than actually you are. And then there's catatonic. This is immobility or excessive purposeless movement. There's extreme negativism and or parrot-like repeating of another's speech or movements. Childhood schizophrenia is something to note too. Um, It's one of several types of schizophrenia, a chronic mental illness in which a person loses touch with reality, right? We talked about this, but it happens then in children. So childhood schizophrenia is essentially the same. Um, as it is in adults, but it occurs early in life and has a profound impact on the child's behavior. And it includes all of those things, um, but namely problems carrying out routine daily tasks, such as bathing, right? It's going to impact their development and the learning of things that adults have already acquired. 
So we've got to understand the brain of a schizophrenic, just like we have to understand the brain of other um, disorders, but namely depression. And we've got to understand it here. Schizophrenia is a disease of the brain exhibited in symptoms of the mind and how the person behaves. So there are actually brain abnormalities. There's um, an overactivity of dopamine, and you need to highlight that, underline it, star it. That's the most important thing about a schizophrenic brain you need to understand. Researchers have found that schizophrenic patients express higher levels of dopamine D4 receptors in the brain, so they have more dopamine rushing through. Brain scans show abnormal activity in the frontal cortex, thalamus, and amygdala of schizophrenic patients. You should take a moment to remind yourself of the functioning of all three of those because it can kind of start to make sense. And also, adolescent schizophrenic patients show brain lesions. So, and this um, image just kind of shows you that activity. Schizophrenic patients may express morphological changes as well, like enlargements of um, the fluid-filled ventricle. So in the smack dab middle of your brain, you have this butterfly-shaped, butterfly-like shaped gap essentially in your brain. But what they found is that in the patient of schizophrenic, that area is bigger and therefore has more fluid, right? Like all space around your brain is fluid-filled. So some more to note, there's abnormally low activity in the frontal lobes, um, and the hallucinations tend to be too much activity in the thalamus and that they're not understanding where, where to send things. And the greater the shrinkage of the hippocampus and amygdala, the worse the disorder. Really interesting one. And then if the thalamus is small, the greater difficulty in filtering information and possibly reacting in the correct manner. So that kind of explains the disorganized actions and even speech. So why do these occur? Well, it could be due to prenatal problems like low birth weight, birth complications, infections that the mother has during pregnancy, especially the flu. Influenza during the middle of fetal development has something to do with it. And then there's also genetic factors. This one's big. The likelihood of individuals suffering, suffering from schizophrenia is 50% if their identical twins have the disease. Now, I need to caution you. This does not mean that identical twins are more likely to be schizophrenic. No. What this means is that if someone happens to have an identical twin, who is schizophrenic? that person is 50% more likely to also be schizophrenic. Some other early signs. A mother's long-lasting schizophrenia has a huge genetic impact on if her children have it. Birth complications like oxygen deprivation and low birth weight. Short attention span and more muscle coordination. Disruptive and withdrawn behavior. Seems kind of symptomatic. Emotional unpredictability as well. And then poor peer relations and solo play are all those like early warning signs. So that wraps it up. I try to go quickly for you, but schizophrenia really is a big one to make sure that you really understand um, because it is just so complicated and really does impact the human experience worldwide. So thanks so much for tuning in. I would so love it if you'd subscribe to my newer YouTube channel. And again, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.